It's a fun <laughs> Tom's River, New Jersey. Candy, tell, tell them about yourself. Well, okay. Wait I have a, a question for you. Who's that, who's that girl over there in the purple dress?
Yes. Lachlan Town. They're all invited. Special discount for North Allegheny. Class of 59. Class of 59. She'll probably give you a discount if you're even in 58 or 61. Maybe. Good. Maybe. Are you Are you here? But I have Lloyd, done very well. Lloyd, you're going to get roasted for this because I'm going to be up there. Are you going to? Well, tell us a little about it about yourself. Where do you live? Um, I live um, in California. Where's your wife? That's where I want to be. My younger sister's over there with Bill Gorman. God, that's not safe to be over there at Gorman. Where? where? Your wife. Okay, which, which, I didn't even know your wife was here, so I thought was somebody. Is it your wife? What dress is she wearing? All right. Where's your wife? Please. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, we're ready to take the class pictures. We're going to have to split up and take two seatings, although the picture will be on one 8 by 10 when we're all done. So uh, in order to get the numbers right here, we're going to start out by trying uh, A through M with everybody using their maiden name. And if we have too many or too few, few on the first sitting here, we'll start with the couple more. <laughs> Does have a six by seven back on it, or is this well, a the four? whole format of the camera is six by seven? This is a Polaroid Four's back, back, and then the six by seven back is coming on. Why are you videotaping this? Because, because I've got one too. <laughs> <laughs>
for $50 to get that roll? No, there's a little girl who's out at the end of the hall outside <laughs>
Okay. Friend of mine, I think it's like. done so this year we put out a little more effort and here we are hope you enjoy yourselves and move around a little bit talk to everybody instead of just staying in one spot and not seeing some of the folks you haven't seen for a while uh, this overdue reunion was put together tonight with the help also of a professional company that's called touch of class they did a lot of research for us uh, they, they did this nice little book that we have and did a lot of the arrangements and everything for us but we're still missing a lot of people that we'd like to update our files with so that we can have a 35-year reunion if everybody's interested, which I assume they would be. So I put a, a box up here that asks for information and positive input. You'll notice there's nothing on there that says anything about complaints or <laughs> anything derogatory. But if you know anything about anybody at all, uh, you heard it or brother work somewhere or you know someone you don't see here tonight and you know that their parents had moved or anything that might help us locate somebody that can locate them we would appreciate your input so that we can get a, an updated list here for the next reunion this one was a little bit uh, this one's a little bit hectic and a little bit 
but un unorganized here, although we did pretty well. We've got 62 classmates tonight out of 100 people, and I believe our 10th reunion we have 67, so we haven't done too bad a job of losing everybody here. Uh, first off, I'd like to put out an appeal here for a few more committee members. We, we uh, one of the reasons we didn't get done last year is we had a shortage of committee members. I'm sure that we got lots of folks here would be interested in helping out and doing some of the work, having a little bit of fun here. It's not necessary for you to be local. They have new things now, they call telephones and fax machines. They have US mail. You got, you got lots of things that, that would help you to keep in touch with us. And most of the things that we need for you to do are things like contacting different people and uh, various little duties that could be done from anywhere in the United States. And two of the people that were real influential this time are from out of state. We've got Betty from New Jersey and Ralph Miney from California. So kind of proves that you don't have to be here in order to, to get this going. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ralph, has, Ralph from California has, has done lots of work, came here and planted himself at our table for five days, ran my phone bill up, just made himself a regular pain in the neck. But uh, he's, done, he's done a tremendous lot of work and, and has not been in Pittsburgh when he's doing any of it. Uh, if you have any interest at all in, in helping us and being on the, the committee that we would like to start now rather than wait four years and start in the last two months or so, which is what we usually seem to do, uh, I've got a list right up here that would like, like to have you put your name, address, and phone number on it so that we can contact you. I have to check my notes here tonight because, um, as you may have noticed, I'm not a public speaker. Uh, I've got three little items tonight I want to tell you about. The first is a 50-50 raffle that we're having here. 50-50 uh, means that we're, we're going to give back 50% of all the money that we collect here tonight. Tickets are uh, $2 a piece. No, they're, wait a minute, they're three, no, no dollars. Three for five or six for ten. Six tickets for ten dollars. And we've got quite a bit of money in here now. You're going to if you happen to be the lucky winner, you're going to make a real killing here. You're going to get enough money to pay for your trip to Pittsburgh and buy the condo in Aspen that you've been waiting for. So we need, we need to sell lots more tickets. The money will be used here. Half of it is going to be awarded back again. The other half is going to be used to pick up a few little incidental expenses that we've had at the end here and start an account so that we have some money to get the next reunion going unless we have too many negative comments here, which are not allowed any comments. <laughs> Secondly, uh, we're having a videotape taken tonight by a gentleman by the name of Kevin Raleigh. He's got his degree right here. He has a degree in cinematography. Uh, he has worked on, on professional full-length films, so we expect the, this video will be a nice one tonight. Uh, right now, we don't really know what we're going to do about cost on it. We're going to have to take the cost that, that we incur tonight and that it takes to have the coffee. But we would like to have anybody that's interested just let us know that they would like this, like this tape. Uh, I'll set out another, another uh, tablet up here. If you would just put your name and address and phone number on here, when we get, when we get them all together here, we'll give you a call on it. I would guess the cost on it is probably going to be all about $15, $15 yeah, or so. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what we're going to end up with. Nobody's going to make any money on it. Okay, and thirdly, we're going to have a picnic tomorrow. Everybody is invited. We'd like to see everybody there. We have, uh, I think, maybe close to 40 people right now that, that have signed up or have expressed an interest on it. Uh, it's going to be out in North Park. We're going to start at 2 o'clock. We're going to have a keg of beer starting at 2 o'clock. We're going to serve food at 5. We're going to have a, a catering service come in. They're going to bring in uh, barbecue beef sandwiches, wing dings, and an assortment of the regular picnic salads. And anything else that you would like if you're coming to this, uh, munchies or snacks or any other drinks other than the beer, we'd appreciate it if you would bring them. Cost is going to be $10 per person. We will supply cups and ice, and when we 
we run out of beer, if you're figuring on staying late, you're afraid you're going to run out, which I'm sure we will, wouldn't be a bad idea to throw a case in your trunk or something. <laughs> the grove is called Ledgewood. Real easy to find. Even I find it. When you, when you head into North Park on Ingemar Road, if you come into the park, from Ingemar, past the batting range and the golf, the driving range, which we all remember. As soon as you cross over Coomer Road, it's the first row on the right. I'll bring it right back for so somebody else. So, heading to the park, it's going to make any turns. It's on a high side. We'll, we'll try to put a, some kind of a little sign down there. Uh, we hope to see everybody there. It'll be a little less formal atmosphere, and I'm sure it'll be lots of fun. And fresh bang tag. <laughs> right here at the front table is taking the money. We have lots of room for everybody, you know. Uh, we appreciate it you sign up tonight and we'll take prize in tomorrow so we know we have a caterer. So she'll, she'll be sitting here all evening. If you get a chance, if you'd like to come, please stop up and put your name on the list. She's never sat all evening in her life. Well, she'll be long. Hand and money. Scratch two tens together. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank everybody tonight that was on our, on our committee. We had, uh, we had a short period of time to do this, and apparently it didn't turn out too bad because everybody's here. Looks like everybody's having fun so far. Uh, we had, we didn't start until, until kind of late. Had a hard time rounding people up, which hopefully is not going to happen again. But we were lucky enough to get enough folks together here to do this. Uh, I'd like everybody on the committee to call their names and stand up with really well. First, we have Jerry Doris. <laughs> Jerry's quite busy with her schedule. She's a real estate salesperson, and she took a lot of time out. I know she, she couldn't afford it, but she did it for us anyhow. And I don't know if anybody else knows this or not, but I think she's just as cute as she was when she was in high school. <laughs> And 
last is somebody that's not even from our class. She was in a class of 62. My wife, Connie McElroy. Yeah. This is our undisputed leader. She does everything, takes care of everything, keeps everything under control, does all the, all the calls and everything that, that I don't do or don't care to do or am incapable of doing. And next, to, for your pleasure here, we have our Toastmaster tonight. Ralph Miner is going to roast the class of 59. <laughs> Before he starts, I want you to know. <laughs> the views and opinions you were about to hear not necessarily that of the management or the committee. Please direct all your derogatory remarks Gunfire and lawsuits. Okay, Rob. Well, Mr. McElroy tried to take some of my thunder, but that is not true. This was not my idea. The roasting of the class was the committee. I was in California and had nothing to do with this whatsoever. But in case you're wondering, or in case there's any problems tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Dave Mike. Dave Mike, if you have any problems with what I say, which is not my ideas, my beliefs, in any way, shape, or form, Dave Mike will be here and will address all, all problems to Dave Mike. Smile, Mike. <laughs> Seating, it's not theirs. <laughs> Take Osley, stand up. Norm Osley, stand up. Norm Osley, uh, Mr. Anke wants you to stand up. I don't know what he means by that. Chuck, you didn't look close enough. <laughs> look, at that, look at that rug. Look at that rug. <laughs> now, I, Norm, I believe that's yours. For all you that didn't mature and gain a few pounds, like most of us have, you probably have eight. <laughs> Well, I don't know why they picked on you. Right? <laughs> I mean, we're not going to thank you. If everybody remembers in 59, we had what they called the hall patrol. We had the big guys, you know, patrolling the halls. Our class didn't need the hall patrol because we had a couple females that wore black leather jackets and carried switchblades. And they patrolled our halls. Maxine Formal and Judy Huck. <laughs> Does everybody remember who started the marriage craze? We weren't around because we left, but I think her name was Judy Royston. <laughs> but the next year there were about four or five marriages, so she got it going. Judy, where are you? <laughs> Why is she covering her face? <laughs> We're going to give a couple awards before dinner, then we'll do the rest of the roasting that the committee wants me to do, you know, contrary to what my debate for ideas. We're going our first award will be for the person who has the youngest child. Not adopt a child, not grandchild, a child. Now, is there anybody that has a younger child than about two and a half years old? <laughs> well, if not, if, if not, can't imagine why he's looking at somebody else. 
if there isn't anybody that has a younger child than about two and a half, would our illustrious class president, <laughs> Bernard Buckdellis, please come forward to your award. <laughs> to show it to everybody. It's a little picture for his little edition, and in the middle of the picture is a condiment. <laughs> Congratulations, Bob. That's true. Don't, don't try to sit down because I'm sure you're going to give us some advice on, you know, how you achieved this award. Ralph, this will never fit. <laughs> child that I have uh, was from my second marriage, and uh, he's a great kid, and uh, he should be here tonight to see all these folks, because uh, he can steal the show, and uh, I'm very proud of him, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that marriage has gone down the tubes also, so <laughs> hopefully that's the last one we'll have, uh, unless we have another... Uh, Reunion in five years, maybe I can have a uh, <laughs> my teeth glued back together, and then I can have a, a six-month-old one. <laughs> because Lord knows, I, I sure could use another award like this. <laughs> um, but, but this was that was unprepared. Bucks didn't know he was going to receive that award. He did a good job. Um, <laughs> I don't know if his new girlfriend uh, goes along with his thoughts or not, but he might ask her, you know, he might ask him later this evening or maybe tomorrow to pick him. <laughs> There's a classmate among us, you know, a lot of us have had unusual situations happen to us over the years. But there's one classmate that kind of sticks out in the committee's mind that has an unusual situation happen to them. They went to a college that no longer exists. They attended a college called Parsons College in Iowa that doesn't even exist. <laughs> now you talk about making it. Bill Mulligan attended Parsons. And I'm just wondering, Bill, where do you go for homecoming? <laughs> <laughs> Our second award tonight will be the classmate who has achieved the most overcoming the most obstacles on the way. There's an awful lot of us that has achieved an awful lot, but one stands out as the one that achieved, who has achieved the most overcoming the largest obstacles. This classmate graduated with us, I think. He was rated about last in the class. He was not last. He was rated 203rd. I don't know how many people's in the class, but he was 203. He not only, after graduation, he comes back to North Allegheny, and he spends a complete year back at North Allegheny 
because while he was there with us, he forgot to take anything worth a damn. <laughs> Not only that, being ranked 203rd, he didn't do very well in the damn things he took. <laughs> this person is now a senior vice president of an international company in Denver, Colorado. But we as classmates had good vision because we elected him as our class vice president, Charles Asher. Charlie? Charlie, and before you leave, we would like you to maybe give some of us a little tip on what motivated you to your success that you achieved at this early age. <laughs> I, I think it's called being scared as hell <laughs> and wanting to do something. Uh, I think that's it. You're not done. <laughs> There's, a, there's another guy that uh, uh, probably uh, should have achieved this award. I don't know if he's here or not. But, uh, um, the, the guy that ranked last in the class was uh, uh, Dennis Beck. Um, <laughs> Dennis is probably the wealthiest among us today. Uh, he's done extremely well, and uh, if, if he weren't here, he'd be. If he were here, he'd be the guy standing up here. That's all you have to say about it. Uh, you just hang on a minute. We're going to eat in about 10 minutes, but we have some numbers that we're trying to find. Um, but as well, you still trying to find the numbers. I gave it to him to take care of, I think. Gone. Yeah, probably one of the people that had numbers. Oh, oh here they are. Now, we have a tight budget this year, and really tight. And if everybody could pull out their ticket numbers, they have a number on them. And, and there's five numbers that we don't have dinners for. <laughs> But maybe if you see somebody that's maybe not very hungry, you can you know, get something from them. The numbers are 080110, 0898657, 0808122, 0908624. Let me repeat that. 080084. That's a winner, so much. Now, now I hope we, I hope when they ran out of the dinners that people just kind of raise their hands so we know where they're at. Maybe you tell who you have to get some food to. <laughs> You're going to have to admit it because they do know they're going to take your tickets before they serve you. <laughs> I'll repeat the numbers real fast. 0808110, 0908657, 0808122, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424, 0908424
and the classmates who are here with us. We would also like to remember those classmates who are not able to be with us. We thank you for your many blessings, both large and small. And tonight, we especially ask that you help us to open our hearts and minds so that we can not only renew old treasured friendships, but have the wisdom to make new ones. Amen.
John Hermesman. This guy remembers everybody and everything that happened. <laughs> Tanya Humphrey. And Joan Jackson. Greg Jericho. Greg Humphrey. Claudia Flavor. Frida Kohler, Dave Kosminski, Harry Lambeck, Bill Lambeck, I'm good at that. Harry. Okay. Mark Malchano, Mark, Rick Mandera. Next, and Ralph Miner, who was both have seen enough of us. Bill Mulligan. Bob Snellis. Norm Osley. The lady that instigated this whole thing, Judy Parker. John Rinkus. That was how much the same as you did before. <laughs> Bill Royston. And her twin sister, Judy Royston. Suzanne Salter. Loretta Schmidt. Ron Schwager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was afraid he'd show up. <laughs> Jim Trudy. Yeah, he's still in the same too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dick Senoway. Did Dick stand up? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Chuck Six. Tom Sranek. He looks a little taller than everybody else. Candy Sweeney. And Carolyn Cuddles. Peggy Van Miller. Peggy here. Judy Wagner, Janice Watson, I thought everybody's afraid to stay standing up here, <laughs> Joanne Watts, Pat Weber, Carol Weidenhoff here, and we have Dolly Weiss. Okay, now I'm sure I missed half a dozen people. Who did, who did I miss here? Stand up. I can't believe it. About everybody. Huh. Okay. All right. Uh, are we pretty well off the dessert here? We have, a, we have a, a, a real entertaining thing for you. Uh, if, Carol, are you ready to go Okay, great. We have to have like, five cheerleaders that were left, because they were on our cheerleading squad in 1959. We have four of them here. And I'm not quite sure what we're going to do for you, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. We're going to call off it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Judy Royston, Carol Hagel, Tanya, and Candy, one of her.
Don't be shy. <laughs> Basketball, football.
know, I expected my uh, pocket to be full of money, <laughs> bride money. Um, Big Mike, I don't know where he is, but I wanted him to come back in so that he could remember what he looks like. <laughs> I want his body to be embedded into your mind to make sure that these are not my comments, my ideas, and my beliefs. I really threw away the hardcore things that were given to me to present to everybody as being the mellow, mature person that I am. I threw it away. And I will just be as gentle as I can. Like Don't Mike. irritate anybody till he gets here. Big Mike is on his way. <laughs> Roy, where are you going? <laughs> I know this is boring. Um, this wasn't on the program. Most of the things I said hasn't been on the program. But um, Betty Foster's husband throughout the night has not met one male that has not dated Betty. <laughs> I thought it was Buns and Betty, but evidently it was more than Buns and Betty. <laughs> so, would any male from the class of 59 who has not dated Betty and will admit it? Both these men 
are, not, are now successful presidents of their own company, whereas one has mellowed. Of course, I wrote this, or they wrote it for me uh, before, before certain things happened tonight, so I don't know if I should you know, continue to say this. But anyway, I thought that he mellowed and found her. So anyway, while the other has stayed the same, he continued to promote his self-image. He has continued to be arrogant, pompous, and egotistical. The two people that were voted by the females in 1959 were Roy Davidson and Bill Gorman. <laughs> so, as I said, one has mellowed. Don't you mean? 
had to work overtime to get here. <laughs> um, we originally had one one prize because we didn't think we'd have a tie, but um, uh, Bud, Bud indicated that don't leave. Uh, Bud indicated that uh, maybe give a straw and let it go back and as it is some wine or something and okay. let them share it because we, we broke down and uh, got them each, each uh, a prize. Could you have Miss California turn around? Miss California? Miss <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> um, your Pennsylvania wine. <laughs> we don't get that in California. <laughs> We'd like to thank them. Uh, Sramets are here from California also. Tom and Sue, Tom and Sue, who were out of our class, but the way the crow flies, I guess they were a little bit farther. So we thank you and have a good trip back. Claudia, Claudia has my high school ring. <laughs> Say something. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, you know. Would you like to explain why you won't give my my ring back? <laughs> what I'd really like you to explain is what happened to your white hair. <laughs> <laughs> is that all you want me to explain? <laughs> That'll be easy. <laughs> I don't know. Make sure everybody heard that back. question. I didn't know. Oh, you threw it away. No, you got it back. I didn't know. Okay. Who read, looked at the book or read who was on it. But 
I would like to call up the people I think that are here. If I miss somebody, just jump up here and come up. I would like to talk to you about the yearbook. <laughs> Molly gave us a charge of the yearbook. There were no males on the yearbook. Molly gave us a charge. You talk about chauvinist <laughs> voting or whatever, however they got on that. Because I know that I volunteered and never made it. <laughs> Judy Boussain, Judy Parker, Jerry Jervis, Candy Sweeney, Sue Salter, Rita Curtin, and Carol Cable. Would you please come forward? I have a few questions for you about the yearbook. <laughs> You can come forward now. You're outnumbered, Ralph. You're outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> Did I call this money up? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need my coffee. Um, we do have a spokesman. I can't really talk to everybody, but um, let me tell you a story about Judy. Uh, Judy, I talked to a few weeks ago in my solicitation to see who was coming to the reunion. So being in California, you know, that was out of state, so the committee selected me to call everybody out of state that they gave me numbers to. <laughs> to embarrass them the best I could to see if they'd come to the reunion, beg them, you know, whatever. I talked to Judy in Miami. And I guess I embarrassed her. It worked because she's here. I think that's the reason she's here. Maybe won't be back. But anyway, since Judy's here, she will be the spokesman for the first one. Um, it came to the committee's attention. And I'm going to show you the yearbook. Now, this is a picture. Uh, um, can you see it? <laughs> anyway, this is a picture of the Hall Patrol. <laughs> I mean, and, I and, <laughs> Carol, what I want you to explain is there's guys in the front row. Now, here is a member of our class with a middle finger <laughs> stuck down in front of his pants in an obscene gesture manner, president of a company, <laughs> Jack Rinkus. <laughs> Here is Bill Hoffman with a big finger sticking down the page. Here is Rich Pezich with another gesture down the page. That's one. Judy can comment on how that got in the yearbook. Bad profit, Jerry, bad profit. Yes, indeed. Profit. Profit. Okay, okay. That's all you have to say? Okay. Um, may we go to the Boys Leaders Club picture, page 43. For everybody out here, yes, you're turn, turn your turn. Turn. You can write it down so you can go home and look at it. Mr. Ego. And the Boys Leaders Club picture has a big finger down in front of him in an obscene, in fact, he has two obscene gestures <laughs> in the book. So, Salter, would you please explain how these things got printed in this yearbook? Those of us who wear glasses can't see it, so we deny. <laughs> you wore glasses back then? I do now, and I can't even see it. <laughs> well, you're going to take my word for it. It's there. So, assuming that. Yes, I think that it's a very nice. Very nice. I cannot believe that. Are you making that up? I'm no, not he's done. Not it up <laughs> I'm not done. You never do this happen? No. I'm not done. <laughs> very naive. Now the track picture. <laughs> Page 58. Bud McElroy has two large fingers sticking right out front. Mr. Ego again has a finger and another obscene gesture in the front row. Dave Breyer, who isn't here, kind of has a couple because he was kind of shy. <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy, Norm Osley. Oh. Don't give me no, there is two little deals. 
that you bragged about for years and are now, now denying. Jack Brink is, on the other hand, in between the Leaders Club picture and the track picture, decided not to do it. Now I'm in the pictures and no one can see me with this. Jerry, could you please come and explain how these things got into your book, and furthermore, are they going to be retracted, supplements sent out? <laughs> They are blaming Jim Wall advisors. Right now, right now. So what do we do? Well, he's on the phone right here. I don't know. Bud's, Bud's back there talking to him. Um, we Why have a new, not not to change oh, yeah, the trend, but <laughs> Mike Schwern is on the phone from Australia, trying to give excuses why he can't be here. Like, <laughs> like it's too far to come. Or, you know. Tell him there was a bottle of wine. For oh, did I mention Mike? That's right. He well, maybe he must have heard me. If he did, Mike Schwern, let me point out. <laughs> he definitely does. Now this was oh, Dr. Oh. Schwern's. Mike Schwern, right in the front of the yearbook, with two fingers extending down in front of him. Right there, right in the front row picture. Read it, Jimmy. 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 Read it, I can't believe that for all these years that these people were responsible for these things happening. Now, let me tell you what this is about. You can't see them? I can't see them. <laughs> Bring her glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice check like this. No wonder they're dirty. You can't even see. They are dirty. Anyway, you have to take my word. These people are the ones responsible. Now it's hard to explain, as most of us were parents, and our, our kids through the years pick up our yearbooks and look at our yearbooks. It's hard to explain things they wrote in here about beer drinking things and all that. But you can get around that. Then they have friends who visit you over the years and they see them with these. This is in 59. We're bringing up kids, they're looking at our yearbook and seeing this. You people are responsible. I believe I have a defense. Judy has a defense. If, every, if right. anybody doesn't remember Judy, that's a good looking Judy. Okay. Judy. Well, as I recall, it was not our responsibility to be concerned with obscene gestures. I just remember being instructed to be sure Bill Gormley's picture was in there 18 times. <laughs> How much did it cost? Uh, Sue. What? Uh, Bill Gormley, how much did it cost him to get his picture in 18 times? That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Natalie DeServo, I'd like to point out something on page 27. Now, Natalie obviously have been very unhappy over all these years. Now, here's a front row of smiling girls, and look, what was published in the book? Oh, dear. <laughs> Natalie? <laughs> Where is she? Hiding. Hiding? Um, could Gormley and uh, Shudi go to the back room? Uh, Mike wants to talk to you. Not big Mike. Not big Mike. Not, not big. far away Mike. <laughs> not, not big Mike. Little Mike Schwer would like to talk to you on the phone. Jim. Bill. I know you're bashful, Bill, but you know. Tell him we all said hi. We all said hi. Tell him he still has time to get here. Um, <laughs> if he hurries. Well, girls, I can't believe. Does anybody have any candy, anything that. That's it. Are we going to get a retraction? A supplement? I think we ought to get a group picture of them doing it again. <laughs> good, good idea. Um, Before and after? Or something no, we'll like that? Or now and later? Now and later? Then and now? Okay. Uh, the girls, I'd like to thank you for coming up. Uh, young ladies. Thank you for coming up.
Were you here when I was showing the picture of you in the yearbook and track picture, you know, giving the finger and all that? Did you hear me say that? I heard it. No, I didn't forget it either. Okay. We have Mike Schwerin on the phone, and it's his nickel. <laughs> so anybody that, that would like to take a quick talk to Mike Schwerin should come in here, right through the door here to, to the right, get in line, and let's make him pay for this. Paul, he wants to let everybody know that, that he really wished he could be here. He's going great in Australia. He has his own steel company over there, which he started three and a half years ago. He uh, says he's married a girl over there that's an Australian girl. She had three children of her, of her own, and they have had one since then. And he's doing, he's doing just great. Anybody who wants to irritate him is welcome to go in there and run the bill off. Good. Thanks, bud. Um, I kept Reed up here for a reason. I don't know why so many people got me in trouble so often in the past. But New Year's Eve 1959, we had a party. It wasn't, it wasn't 59, but it was close, near 59. And at the time, I was staying with Kent Wilson, who's no longer with us, at his house, and his parents left for the night, and we had a party. And Rita was there. And Mrs. Wilson always put me in charge for what reason I never could figure out, in charge of making sure everything ran okay. Probably because I was the most gentle, conservative <laughs> person. And I was in charge that night, and I got in big trouble. Because Rita caused the scene. <laughs> Rita's husband's here and has agreed to listen to what happened that night. Her side of the story. If she doesn't tell you, I will. My version. She definitely owes me an apology for getting me in trouble. And I would expect her to tell me what she did, her side of the story, how she got me in trouble. <laughs> well, gee, Ralph, I'm, I'm awfully sorry if I got you in trouble. I don't remember that evening at all. I don't know what happened. I, you know me, I was a very sweet, naive person. <laughs> That's not how I know her. <laughs> I didn't really intend to do this because I really thought she'd tell the truth and own up to what happened. Anyway, at about midnight, we were celebrating the New Year's, and Mrs. Wilson happened to pop in from her parties on her way to another party that she forgot something at home. So she came home, and I was in the hallway patrolling and making sure everybody stayed sober. <laughs> And I saw her heading up to the bedroom and knowing that somebody was in the bedroom with the door shut, I didn't know what to do except pray that she, they locked the door. Well, as I looked up the stairs, I saw her look at her, kind of look down to see that the door was shut, kind of like who's in my bedroom. And it was shut and she went in. And that's when I went to hide. <laughs> Rita, I'm going to give you another opportunity <laughs> to tell us what happened. And I'm going to tell everybody, first of all, who you were with, because it's your <laughs> classmate. He's not here. And he's not here to even defend himself. But I know his side of the story. <laughs> and I know he is an upstanding, honest <laughs> type of individual that would have not told me a lie. <laughs> his name was Louis Collier. <laughs> Rita, what happened? What did Mrs. Wilson find? Well, now you mentioned, uh, Ralph, that the door wasn't locked. The door wasn't locked for a very good reason. She didn't find anything. She just found a couple people talking. <laughs> Rita, that's 
not what really you call yourself. Okay, guys, you know me, you know Louis. <laughs> Who do you believe? <laughs> I believe. I believe Rita because she's here. I believe that nothing happened, but I still got in trouble. Mr. Wilson wants to know why somebody's using, using her bedroom. And I accept your apology, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Looking through the yearbook, I also glanced, I never really knew how our basketball team did. I went to the games, but Tom, don't leave. Well, now that Tom's standing up, Tom's ceramic. Tom was on the wrestling team. Tom is quite big. The basketball team, Jim Sager. Jim Shee was on the basketball team. <laughs> Lloyd Davidson was on the basketball team. They won five games. They lost 15. <laughs> Tom Ceramic wrestled. <laughs> While I'm talking about Tom, Tom, um, can you hear me? Certainly. Tom, raise your hand if you can hear me. Tom, I'm not picking you, I'm just talking to me. So far. Tom was on our committee, the 10th reunion of our graduation class, and Sue and a bunch of people. And that was really the last big reunion we had. Done a survey of the people that were at the 10th year, and now there's a lot of people that that are here now that were not at the tent and vice versa. So there's a lot of people between the two reunions. Over half the class have attended the two reunions. But this letter is addressed to Mr. Shrent Ceramic. And this was one from one of our classmates. She's not here. So let me read you the letter she wrote to Tom at the 10 year reunion. This is dated January 11, 1969. Dear Mr. Ceramic, please never write me again regarding North Allegheny Junior Senior High School. I want nothing to do with that school and with the persons who went there when I did. Nothing whatsoever. Sincerely, Carol Mambula. I think Carol likes us. I don't know if you all remember, back in 59, the school got whitewashed. If you were looking at your program, you will see under comments that I made that I tried my utmost to convince the classmates not to whitewash the school. And I truly did that. But nobody ever, a lot of people got in trouble over doing that. But nobody ever knew where the whitewash was made. And I'm going to reveal that tonight. This person has already been roasted a little bit, but he deserves it. And he deserves it even more now. But I'm going to tell you that our student body president, Lloyd Davidson, made the whitewash for the schools to be whitewashed. I know I'm right. <laughs> Do you have some other really information to tell us? No, I, just, I, I think you're right. I, yeah, I, I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What's amazing, Lloyd lobbied very well, all of us, to say, don't, don't tell anybody I was involved because I am the student body president and I want to graduate. <laughs> so we did. And so Lloyd was holding meetings with the student body and the principal. <laughs> trying to figure out what the suspension or whatever is so going to be. We cleaned it up. Remember, that was what we had to do. That was our right. penalty. Lloyd lobbied hard and heavy on our behalf. I saved your guys' fanny. 
Where's Louis? Louis Collier. Yeah, where's Louis? There was a lot of people with, with the people that was involved, so everybody knows. I'm already standing, but I wasn't involved, so don't think that I was. But if anybody would like to stand up and make sure that everybody knows who did it. Now, there's a number of things done that evening. There was dummies hung over the school. There was flags put up in the hole that they cut down before anybody saw it. There's a lot of other things done. Bud's already standing. He has accepted the responsibility. There's a lot of people involved. Would you like to stand up and be recognized? Feel free to stand up. Thank you. <laughs> They all remember that I try to talk them out of it. <laughs> Lloyd did a good job. He lobbied the administration, and though he got in trouble, we had to clean it up. He wasn't smart enough to use whitewash because he said it'll come off and paint won't. <laughs> so thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> Maybe Ralph would like to tell us who mixed the whitewash. Bud wasn't here, we already did. No. <laughs> Quit trying to steal my thunder. How about um, Black Machete? Pardon? How about Black Machete? You didn't tell that story. Uh, we were not going to tell that story. Oh. I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> but I will tell a story about Bud since he came back. This isn't on the program, but you know, he was saying, you know, he, we made a truce yesterday about not roasting each other since we were going to have some time up there. I held my word until he said a few comments, even though they were pretty nice sometimes. That I remember in high school one time, about 11th grade, Bud was a big hunter. And all the guys would say, you know, I want to go get some game, go with Bud McElroy. So I said, hey Bud, why don't you ever ask me to go hunting? And what was great about it, you hope school to do it. So I was all in favor of that, since I was just hoping it for some other reason anyway. He decided to take me hunting. And I asked him, I said, well, what? gauge of gun do I get or, you know, I don't know what game we're going after. He says, don't worry about a gun, just come along, you know, we leave first period after we check in. And we get on, we go hunting. So he signed in first period and he jumped his, you know, convertible. Sure, and, he, <laughs> and we head out for our hunting expedition to North Park. <laughs> I really don't hunt. And there was no guns. I couldn't figure it out. But he, he, would, he had a can of food or something, and he would put it across the road from the pond in North Park, somewhere where the picnic will be tomorrow. And I don't know what was going on. I thought he was maybe setting up some space or some marking things for his paving company. Um, and then he would go around and sit on the side of the road. Pretty soon, the guts from the pond would cross the road. And Bud would put it in low gear and peel out and hit the guts. The great white hunter. He would kill all of us, little, big, whatever, and then brag how many he got. That was hunting with Bud McElroy. He didn't do the gun. And I won't deny it. And he won't deny it. Bud is a man of conviction, and he admits what he did. Even though they were illegal to do that. I don't know anything he did legal anyway. <laughs> We're going to give away a couple more prizes. One of the categories is a female who looks most the same as she did in 1959. This was an easy choice because we had a male in charge in a committee to select. <laughs> Males have the ability to make a decision. <laughs> They made the decision promptly. They made it a very good choice. Right or wrong. Right or wrong. <laughs> the winner for the female who most looks the same as she did in 1959. And always remember, we're using the names that we remember them by, although we're not using their very names. We're going to use the name that we knew them by. Carol Wyckoff. Carol here, I 
yeah. We have we have something for you, so you have to walk up. And it's nice to sit in the back so we can see you walking down the aisle. Just make sure everybody agrees with the selection committee. Betty has. Did I pick the gold? Um, that was Hank over there. He was the chairman of the selection committee. Um, the prize for the female the most looks the same is a bottle. Birthday control pills. <laughs> Congratulations, Carolyn, before you leave. We expect you to say a few comments to your classmates on how you maintain such a lovely figure. <laughs> Etc. Et yeah, Etc. I'm really impressed. <laughs> I really have no comments. I'm bored. Thank you. Right I have four children. I don't know what keeps me in shape. The spa. I really don't feel like I'm in shape. Thank you all. We're going to wait to get all the way back to your seat. Everybody cast your eyes to the back. So <laughs> Bob, you did a good job keeping her in the shape for the reunion. <laughs> Bob's her husband. The other award is for the male who has remained in the eyes of the committee the same, the most the same. We put females in charge of selecting the male. The whole evening was spent with changing their minds. This is typical of females. My wife is here, and she would admit it, and I'm all sure that you will. The prize for the one male who has remained the same is Dave Kuzminski. sticks out the most was the seventh anniversary of the eighth grade picnic. We, uh, for obvious reasons, always had trouble getting a location because it lasted usually for days. A lot of us were in college and different places, and Norm Osley indicated that his parents were leaving for a couple weeks and that they would be more than happy. Obviously, if he never attended one of our other reunions, he volunteered his parents' house to use for the seventh anniversary of our eighth grade picnic. Norm, the owls, is going to come up, whether he wants to or not, and tell us what happened to his house, and then he will tell us what happened to him. Well, like most traumatic events, I don't really remember much about what happened that night. 
But um, I had another comment before I tell you about the debacle. <laughs> I have an explanation as to why the people who worked on the yearbook didn't catch those obscene gestures. I believe they didn't know what it meant. <laughs> True? <laughs> uh, is Big Mike still back here? <laughs> Notes. <laughs> no, these are bills. Um, there's nothing in there about me. Big Mike is gone. <laughs> and browsing over, I don't even think I was there, but let's say, Big Mike, he pants. My, I'll keep a hand. <laughs> well, the, the reason I wanted Big Mike was he should have been at the party. Uh, he should have been at that reunion uh, because we could have used him because this small gathering. As I recall, started out with about six people. <laughs> what are you looking at? And it went up. Well, I think uh, I think you were there, around Sixty. And it ended up over a hundred, <laughs> as I recall. And a few people who probably aren't here tonight from our class are probably buried in the hole in the backyard. <laughs> I know we had to dig it up Briar. once to get Briar out. <laughs> Half of my parents' kitchen disappeared into the hole. I should tell you what this hole was all about. The idea was that we would have a, a pig roast, right? And starting, this was supposed to start on Saturday morning, and we would eat this barbecued pig. And the previous Wednesday, Chuck Anke took up a position uh, north of the hole. And his job was to throw wood into the hole. He must have thrown a lot of other things because kitchen, kitchen chairs disappeared. We sort of ran low on wood. And uh, the television set. But what I, what I really want to take advantage of here tonight is, is the opportunity to give a few bills. <laughs> why I was asking about Big Mike. <laughs> I have a bill here from uh, Kelly and Cohen clients for one refrigerator. <laughs> uh, these are 1962 prices, $110.38. Uh, that goes to Bill Gormley. <laughs> bill, I have, you don't have to pay that, but you have to come up and play the pencil. <laughs> come on, Bill. Ralph, you... Go escort him up. <laughs> Gordon, yeah. if you don't come forward, we'll call Big Mike. Big Mike will bring you up. <laughs> or, or better yet, Judy Hawk is right behind you. <laughs> if, you if you don't come up, it means those aren't your teeth. <laughs> You've got to prove it. <laughs> Number two. Number the second bill, while Bill is on the way is a bill to Callaway Carpet for Luke, Luke Collier. Uh, he was the dancer that tore up the rug in the front room. Come on over here, Bill. Uh, that's for Such a drink, then. $211.99. We're getting off easy. <laughs> was Rita with you? No, she Louis. Can, Louis. Oh, Louis. Was, was Rita Curtin with Was Rita Curtin with Louis that night? Probably. <laughs> Somebody was in the bedroom upstairs. Sounds like her. Sounds like her. <laughs> that was Faye. Though. Play, maestro. <laughs> I haven't played in 30 years. That's okay. That's well, this this your encore. It's 30 years. You ought to be good. Then. Come on. William Tell <laughs> Overture. William Tell Overture. Tell Overture. B flat. I played in 30 years. B flat. <laughs> My wife is never going to believe it.
Mayor Leeds. All right. Let's see, I have another, I have another bill here uh, from Brown and Vaughn. Brown and Vaughn. The entire rear bedroom was burned out. Uh, we were able to trace it to cigarette butts. Uh, and I think Chuck Anke was smoking Lucky Strike then. Right? And, and anyhow, Bill goes to him for $4,322. Pay up. <laughs> and the last bill goes to Chuck, too. Uh, and he's going to come up and tell us a story about what this was all about. Uh, uh, we, had, we had this nice awning out behind the house. And for some reason, Ank was up on the back porch. And about 3 a.m. in the morning, we were all sitting on the porch and things had kind of settled down. And suddenly, the awning parts, it was like, and it was like lightning. And Ank came roaring down through the, through the awning and slapped right there on the, on the country. And uh, never spill a drop. Never, never spill a drop. Didn't spill a beer, I guess. And, and what you've got to do in lieu of payment of, how much was it? Uh, 400, and that was... No, this is for the awning. Brown and Vaughn. I had one here. Cool vent. Cool vent. Awning. $275.62. But if you'll come up here and tell us what you saw in the bedroom window. <laughs> it caused you to stumble backwards. I have a feeling that if you have another one of those condoms, you should have had it back then. And you should have given it to Dave Breyer, who was in the bedroom. <laughs> but I'd like you to confirm that. And I'm going to finish and let Dan take over. But that was... Too bad Breyer's out here. <laughs> it was a hell of a party. <laughs> you know, a lot of you guys probably will remember. Um, can't remember how I got in the river. <laughs> we went up on a roof. Um, we had, the story all started, as Norm said, where we had, you know, three, four, five, six guys, and we were going to have a little party. And next thing you know, we're, you know, we're doing a keg here and a you know, half gallon there. And Brash says, you know, we, we need like six half gallons of gin. And you know, a lot of, a lot of tonic, you know, a lot of, a lot of limes and stuff. <laughs> and we, we dug the hole and started burying the pig. And it was a, like a two, three day deal where we, we buried this pig. And we dug the pig up. And we said, my God, there's more people coming. My God, you know, with all this money, we got to go out and buy more booze. And all that stuff. Go ahead and buy some booze. Throw some Jack Daniels on the wall. A lot of gin, a lot of gin. And we dug the pig up. And we had the big, big thing, and everybody was eating you know, raw pork. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we had, we had uh, bread and ketchup, I think. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes we're in the middle of the night. Somehow we get some hookers. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea who in the hell I got the hookers. <laughs> so here's here's Briar, and we know Briar is the ultimate virgin. The right? essential virgin. Briar is upstairs with the hooker. Oh my God! Everybody wants to go up on the roof and look in the windows. And uh, I don't know who else was up there. Um, you look around the room here a little bit. <laughs> Schweiger. No. <laughs> okay, hell, you left. And there's uh, you know, a few other familiar faces. Uh, Harry. Boom. And 
you know, that's that's the whole the whole story of uh, the, the awning. But that night on our way home, after uh, driving her again, uh, we thought we blew up in Helmand or two. <laughs> But uh, somehow, we can help with that. The next day, we were football practice, and we were doing our calisthenics. And of course, you, know, you don't do it with Eleanor, except for Schweiger and I. <laughs> because we saw cops standing up on the top of the bank watching us in you know, practice. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's the cops, you know. Ron says, We're here helping, they won't see us. <laughs> So, of course, they were, uh, that night at home, they, they came and visited us, and we went to get, you know, replaced the, uh, the mailbox for the good doctor. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the whole, the whole deal of, like it or not, especially on that, of the, uh, seventh anniversary of the Great I think he did. He did. <laughs> no, Norm did not finish. Norm obviously got in trouble over this. He asked us for the money back then. We didn't have any. But we still don't. But Norm got in trouble. And he forgot to tell us what his parents did to him. He's going to tell us now. He's thinking. <laughs> well, I remember, I know he lost his car out of school. Some other things. That was standard. <laughs> I, I can't remember much of anything. He can't remember when he this age. And he, didn't remember, he didn't remember having the party <laughs> until just now. Okay, no one. Do you remember that? No. Needless to say, it was the only party I ever had. <laughs> I think maybe that was the, the punishment that, that I promised for the rest of my life never to have a party in that house again. Um, but I think, in consideration of the fact that so many people remembered it, it must have been a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ego, please sit down. Big mic's out here. We are almost down. Norm just won't shut up. He did bring his wife. He still, does everybody agree that he still stayed the same? Our next award is for the person, classmate, who has changed the most overall. And the winner is Pat Fishman. This is a bottle. I hope it's ginger ale. Well, I'm sure you, well, I don't know. But congratulations, Pat, and I'm sure you have something to say for it. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I know. Oh. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no secrets, huh? No, just don't eat, and that's how you get food. <laughs> <laughs> was so fierce because we're going to have an award for the most divorces. <laughs> Some classmates indicated that they weren't done yet. <laughs> and they saved this contest for the next reunion. <laughs> we will have a 35 
35th anniversary, which would be in four years. I hope I don't have to make a few trips to California. I don't have to stay at the McElroy step morning and night, embarrass anybody, threaten people, get people like Big Mike to intimidate people. We will have the 35th anniversary if anybody cares to show up. Our last award for our dance, where we can all show what we're still made of, <laughs> will be for the person. And this is a very special award with a classmate who has been married to the same person the longest. And I don't have the number of years that I don't think anybody can beat it, and I don't even know how many years it was, but Chick Blackburn is our winner. She actually won her husband to come up with her because they're both, whether they know it or not, will comment <laughs> on a secret that has applied past many of us. This is a nice brandy sip, sip sir. And we are whatever. Full? No. I even know about the bike over one. Anyway, Chick would like to say something for us, and her husband follow up, I'm sure, some great comments. Well, I don't know, maybe some of you remember my husband, he graduated in the class of 57, and we went all through high school, high school sweethearts, and stayed that way for 30 years. All right. Children. Right. Um, Mark and Joan had six. We have five and three quarters right now. <laughs> uh, Mark, we, we, we almost tied for the grandchildren. Uh, five and uh, one and the other. One. Uh, I don't know if to say that a secret to a good marriage, Joni, but it's uh, good people, good understanding people, and a good woman. That's what I am, and I appreciate it. Thank you.
Nice seeing everybody. Okay, I want to thank everybody here. We're going to move the drawing back on 50 50 to 11 30 so everybody can dance for a little bit and then we'll interrupt you again to avoid the big bucks. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to pick me. Yes, we got a I remember the baby. 
keeps just yeah. uh, can't imagine. It's a lucky guess. Oh, it's a lucky guess. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself. Yes, well tell us about yourself. Very good time. Your family. What are you doing uh, with your life? Your family, children, future plans. Your favorite films. Who's your favorite videographer this this evening?
Let's go. What? what no one is safe. Saying? Tell us about yourself. What are you doing with yourself? Oh, your name, where you live. I'm Judy Parker, who is now turned into Judith Bernhardt somehow. <laughs> I have two daughters, one that just turned 18, just graduated this year. She is absolutely gorgeous, and several of the dirty old men here have asked me to be introduced tonight. <laughs> does, does she need a portfolio done? <laughs> but I have another one up and coming who is 12 and equally gorgeous. I'm a single parent of two nice Seven, twenty-five, and uh, twenty-three. Sounds good. 
<laughs> Terrific. Thanks. Sure. going to go to one winner. We're going to give you about uh, 30 seconds, come up with your ticket number, and then pull another one. And um, I apologize if this isn't enough for a condo in Aspen, but I, I really have no idea how much it costs. I've never priced them, but I'm sure it's enough for a down payment. So here we go. Okay, we have number 8928007. It's number 8928007. $193. We have a winner. Okay, the guy that won this is, is embarrassed to come up here and show his face because he's the richest guy here. His name is Bugs Nellis, and he sent his emissary up here. We're going to let her say a word. Oh. How much did I win? $193. That's great. Oh, thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Bugs, you better cover the door. I think she's on her way out. <laughs> okay, listen, we're looking for everybody tomorrow at the picnic, and uh, we still have lots of room, so if you want to come out, it's easy to find. Come into the park. We're the first place on the right as you come in on Ingemar Road. Thanks, and enjoy yourself. <laughs> 